These were extremely valuable ships. They considered them the great treasure ships of the world in either direction, whether they were carrying silver in one direction or whether they were carrying the luxury goods of the Orient in the other. The Manila galleon trade in the early days consisted of two or three ships a year going across the Pacific and coming back. Eventually, it became only one ship, one much larger ship, each year upon which the entire Spanish Pacific trade depended. This was a uh, luxury trade. The Europeans from the Middle Ages on, or even from the Roman period, wanted the luxury goods of Asia, the silks, the spices. This is what drove it in the beginning. Columbus was going to go out there and find China, find Japan, and find the really high value goods that would be worth carrying across these vast ocean distances. The trade was driven in two directions. The Spaniards were fortunate to find huge amounts of silver in the New World. One tends to think of the gold of the Aztecs and the Incas, but that was a momentary phenomenon. The real driver of world trade was the Spanish silver found in Mexico and in Upper Peru, what is now Bolivia, a place called Potosí. That was needed by China. It was one of the very few things the Chinese wanted from the rest of the world and the Spaniards had it in great quantities. It wasn't until the Spaniards took Manila in 1571 and established contacts with Chinese traders directly that they were able to establish the trade we think of as the Manila Galleon trade. The first ships sailed from Manila with a Chinese cargo in 1572. They were driven back by storms. The same ships made it the following year too Acapulco, and that established, firmly established, the trade. And that continued until 1815, when New World and many world changes finally stopped the trade. That's a long time. That is, a, that is an incredibly long time for a single trade to be carried on in the same terms, silver going west and the oriental luxuries coming east.